Hi, and welcome to part two of the um, first tutorial on coding and game design in Wolf.js. In this tutorial, we're creating a little 2D catch the monster game. In the first tutorial, we added a backdrop, we created the player sprite, the enemy sprite, and then variables to um, store the score and time in the game. Okay, one thing I um, forgot to say in the last tutorial was to save the um, project. So make sure you save regularly, click on save. And the first time you save your project, you need to give it a name. Um, can't con it can't contain spaces or different special characters. So just give it a name. For example, my um, first wolf JS game. And then OK. And this button will change to green when it's saved. So that's saved. <clears throat> OK. So now what we need to do is to create, create some text to display the score and timer on the screen. So we can create new variables for that. We can make the one for score first. So say score text. And make sure that your variables don't contain any spaces, the names of the variables. So var score text equals new. And this time, instead of using an image like we use for the sprites, we're going to create a new text. OK. Uh, clicking between those two sets of brackets and hit return or enter. And between these brackets, we're going to add information about the score text. So firstly, the text will be score. Oops, the actual word score. We'll add a colon and a space. And at the end of the word score, we're going to add on the actual score value using the score variable, which is um, we created here. So now we can see on the screen, it says score zero. If we change score to five, it will say score five. Okay, we'll set that back to zero. Next thing we'll do, so add a comma for some more information about the score text. And what we'll do is we can specify its position. Now, rather than saying something like x um, 250, um, sorry, x um, minus 250, maybe, and um, y, let's say 300, uh, or maybe that was a bit too far, y 250. Okay, rather than saying something like that to move the score into the top corner, what we can actually do is specify how far we want the score text to be from the left edge of the screen and the top edge of the screen. Because if you just manually specify the exact position of the score text, um, it's going to display differently on different size screens. So it will display differently here um, to where if we click on this button to make the um, game viewable in full screen, it might actually be um, you know, around here somewhere instead of up in the top corner. So um, in, to make sure that the score doesn't move around on different size screens, we can say how far we want it to be from the edge of the screen or the corner of the screen. Okay, now just, um, I didn't mention before, I don't think, but these buttons here, um, we have the reload button to start the game again, and this button here is to view in full screen. And we also have these different tabs that you can click on and click the X to close them. Okay, so we'll change the X position of the score text to be um, basically the, the minimum X value, which is the left side of the screen. So we can say min uppercase X, min X. You can see it's just gone off the, ledge, the left edge of the screen, so we need to move it in a little bit. So we can say min x plus and a certain amount, maybe about 50, and that will move it in 50 spaces. Okay, and for the top of the screen, if we want to um, specify that the y position to be at the top of the screen and in it or down a little bit from there, we can say max y. So we can use variables, uh, sorry, values like min x, max x, min y, and max y to move the text or any object around. So say max y, it's a little bit too high though, so say minus about 20 to move it down a little bit. Okay, now we can um, specify the size, make that 18, and the color, and make sure you don't put a U in there from the word color. Color can be yellow. Okay, so that's it for score text. Now what we can do is copy that and paste to create our timer text. Okay. Now 
these are going to be two completely different things, the score text and our timer text. So we need to make sure we give each of these variables a different unique name. So we'll create timer text and instead of saying score, it will say time remaining. And instead of displaying the um, score at the end of that, we'll display the time variable. Okay. We'll also change its position. So it can be um, X position can be max X minus, um, well, 50 is not enough because it's been cut off. So we can maybe say minus 90. That looks a bit better. And the Y position can still be max Y minus 20. Size can be the same and color can be the same. Uh, the last two bits of text that we'll need to add are um, messages that will display when the game ends. So one message to display game over and another message to display, um, you know, press a key to restart the game. So outside of those brackets, we'll create a new variable and we could copy and paste this block as well, but um, I've already started typing, so I might as well do it. Var game over text equals new text. Okay, inside those brackets, uh, we'll say text, game over, add a comma for some new information. X position will be zero. Y position will be only about 50. Size, this can be a bit bigger, 45. And color, something different, we'll make it red. Okay. Last text that we'll add is a message to display, um, you know, press a certain key to play again. So var play again text equals new text. And just remember when you're creating variables, don't add any spaces in the variable names. You can use camel case like this, where I'm using a, an uppercase letter for each new word um, instead of adding spaces. So var play again text equals new text. This text will say, press a key to play again. And we'll just make it press P. So we'll check later on when the game's running, if the, or when the game ends, if the user's um, pressing the P key on the keyboard, we'll um, restart the game. So press P to play again. X position will be zero. Y position will also be zero. Size will be 20. And color a little bit different, we'll make it blue. Okay, and there we go. Now, what we need to do, however, is um, when this game starts and while the game is running, we don't want to make that text display. So what we can do is as soon as that text is created and the game starts running, we can make the game over message and the press P to play again message hide. And to do that, we just put in the names of those variables like game over text, and then just say dot hide. Okay, and the same with the play again text. So any object in our game, like text or a shape or an image sprite, we can use dot hide and also dot show to hide or show those objects at certain times throughout the game. Okay, last thing that we'll do in this tutorial, now that we've created all of this text, um, what we need to do is make the timer text go down. So to do that, we can use a loop to basically say every second, make the time go down by one, the time that's displayed on the screen, make that time variable go down by one, or minus one, and update that time on the screen. And we only want to do that for as long as the time is um, not zero. So as soon as the time reaches zero, we can stop doing that. Now to do that, we can use an every loop. Um, and if you click on documentation, you go to, um, if you go to events, there's different events here. Uh, actually, it's not an events, it'll be in control. If you go to control, there's different examples here, like after so many seconds, we can do something, or every so many seconds, we can do something. We can repeat blocks of code a certain number of times or forever, or we can just do something if a condition or different conditions are met. Or we can repeat until a certain event occurs or when something happens. So what we need to do is we need to basically say every one second, make the time go down by one. So we can type in every and we can click on that block that comes up. And if we wanted this thing 
to all these instructions to happen every um, five seconds or every 20 seconds, for example, we could just change that here. We can just change that value. But we want this to happen every one second. And what we're going to do is every one second make the time go down by one, but only if the time is not equal to zero. So we can add a condition inside this every one second loop. We can say if, and click on that block, and here all we have is an if statement. Inside these normal brackets here, we specify a condition, and if that condition evaluates to true, so we test that condition, if it evaluates to true, then we run a block of code inside these curly brackets. So we can basically say, if the time is not equal to zero, so say if time, and what we can do is we can use different conditional operators. We can say um, if time is greater than zero, we could say if the time is less than zero, or we could say if it's equal to, which is uses three equal signs, if it's equal to zero, or not equal to zero, which uses an exclamation mark and two equal signs. And we can also do um, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to as well. But um, it's, it's important to note that when we're assigning a value to a variable, we use one equal sign. So for example, if we want to make the time equal to zero, we say time, one equal sign, and then 20. Sorry, if we want to make the time equal to 20, we say time equals 20. Just one equal sign. What we're doing is we're saying assign this value to this variable. But if we want to compare, if we want to check if time is equal to zero, then we'd use three equal signs instead of one. Now, if we want to check if time is not equals to zero, we use an exclamation mark, which means not, and then two equal signs. Okay, if we want to check if it's greater than or equal to, we could say greater than sign and um, a single equals, or less than and a single equals. But in this case, we're checking if the time is not equal to zero. So we say time, exclamation mark, two, e uh, two equal signs, and then zero. You'll notice that when you type things in, you can get warnings, and it tells us that we're using the, the wrong amount of equal signs here. So um, uh, we can see warnings there, or if we maybe get rid of a bracket, we'll see, um, an error message here saying we expected to see, or well, the code expected to see another bracket to match the first bracket, and instead it saw curly bracket, and you'll see the same error message up here, and it points out where the problem is. So um, make sure that you pay attention to error messages and read what they say to try and figure out what's wrong with the code. So now what we're saying is every one second, check if the time is not equal to zero, and if the time is not equal to zero, we'll make the time go down by one. So we can say time equals time minus one. Okay, doesn't matter if there's a space there. But check, check if time is not equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, time equals time minus one. And um, to actually make that update on the screen, we need to say timer text dot text equals time remaining. Uh, and then the time variable. So now it's counting down and that will stop counting down as soon as the time reaches zero. If we didn't add this if statement here to check if the time um, was not equal to zero, then basically the time will just keep counting now forever and it will become a negative value. So it'll be zero, minus one, minus two, and so on. But because we've added this condition here, it will stop once it reaches zero, okay? because if the time is not equal to zero, this section of code will run. But if that condition is false, in other words, if the time is um, greater than zero, then that code won't run. Sorry, it, it, that, it yeah, won't, won't make the time go down if the time is less than zero. Um, so it only makes it go down for as long as it's not um, equal to zero, okay? Uh, so, as soon as the time becomes zero, that will stop. That condition won't be um, true because time will be equal to zero 
and it will stop counting down. Okay, that's basically it. So another way you can do that is you can say um, time, instead of saying time equals time minus one, you can shorten that by saying time minus equals one, um, which is the same thing. Or you can also say time minus minus, which is an even shorter way of saying it. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. So in the next tutorial, what we'll do is we'll start adding the interactivity in the game. So we'll start uh, allowing the player to interact by pressing keys on the keyboard to move the player around. That's it for this tutorial though. Make sure to save your code and thanks for watching.